everyone, I'm Armstrong Williams. If there's one thing that is consistent in the history of the world, and it's the conflict among nations. You know, I know the Bible speaks about there's a season for all things. There's a time for war, and there's a time for peace. And it seems so easy to have conflict. And I think the higher calling is when you can find a resolution, where you can remove egos, you can compromise, and people can step back, and instead of going to war, have peace. If you think about the countless number of people who have died over the ages, over wars and over conflict, and especially over religion. And the Nassau Institute, which is headed by a very decent uh, human being, Rick Lowe, they're involved in policies and understanding the role of government, not just in Nassau, but the role of all governments, especially in how government can facilitate um, more conflict resolution instead of um, the last resort of conflict and war where lives are lost. And we wanted to have Rick Lowe on the day to talk about the role of governments um, and how do you move away from all of just the thing, kinds of things in the world that we should be pretty, we should almost be perfectionists at now, preventing the conflict. But it seems like we keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again. And when history really reveals itself almost 50 or 60 years later, it is shocking to find out why we go to war and why we have conflict and, and just a miscommunication and how easily it could have been resolved. And that's why I admire your work so much. Talk to us about that. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for inviting us. First of all, I'm, I'm the vice president of the Nassau Institute. Our, our founding president is Joan Thompson, who's a lovely lady, and we obviously share very similar views. But I, I've, in my reading of history, my limited reading of history, and more so in the history in, e in economics, is we get into these conflicts, it's primarily because of class warfare. And we don't understand the merits of people that that have different talents, that have different abilities, different wealth, different ways of thinking about things. And we end up with these conflicts primarily as a result of that. Um, you take the, probably the worst conflict that any of us know of in the recent history that's been ongoing is the, the conflict between Israel and, and many of the other countries in the Middle East. And they have found capitalism in recent years and they have been able to lift their people. In fact, uh, tech, technology, they're per capita, they're now one of the leaders in the world. They're doing more than the U.S. With, with computing and this sort of stuff on a per capita basis. And so when we allow these petty differences and don't appreciate that Armstrong Williams is great at being a, an editorialist and a, and a commentator, and I might be a good car salesman, whatever the case is, we all have a contribution to make. And we tend to forget that, and we, we get in these class warfare issues that are often perpetuated by our politicians. But how much of it sometimes, you know, people tend to want to believe that oftentimes wars are facilitated because it's big business and a cash cow for some special interest group where they're behind, they're like the wizards and they're turning the buttons, they're turning the wheels. And it's not, they don't care about the massive number of lives that will be lost. All they care about is they will have the kind of wealth and build such an empire off a of war that will stay in itself for generations to come. Sure, and that is a concern, but it's, it's interesting that when you get the different power groups involved, uh, it could be, uh, let's use Democrats and Republicans. You know, when, when they went to war in, in uh, Vietnam, the Democrats, the Republicans went to war in Iraq. Um, you got the same argument from both sides. You know, the same argument that was the special interest from the Democrats are involved or the special interest from the Republicans are involved. So, and I don't buy into, uh, let me put it as simply as in, in my way of thinking. The, uh, a congressman in the U.S. was being quizzed on why special interests play such a role in the U.S. And his response was, well, I need them because if I didn't have them, you know, I would never know what's in, in, the bill, in the bills that we're voting on. I get the perspective of, of one group of special interests, and I get the perspective of the others. So they do serve 
a, a useful purpose. What do you mean he would not know what's in the bill? Can he and his staff read the bill themselves? They, uh, Isn't that no. why we send them to Congress? Well, certainly in my experience here uh, in the Bahamas, um, in talking to members of parliament uh, on occasion, um, I'll name the labor bill, for example, when that was implemented in, in the um, late 90s, um, early 80s. The, uh, the guys in charge of voting for it didn't, didn't know what was in there or didn't consider the unintended consequences. So I don't buy the argument that special interests are necessarily bad. Yes, control special interests. Um, they're not, they shouldn't be taking, getting, for example, they shouldn't be getting taxpayer dollars. But if they're getting a point across that may call, help government uh, not do something that's going to impact the lives of all their citizens, then I think they serve a useful purpose. You know, it's, this, is, this, is, this is interesting that in many of the tapings, uh, we have sort of seen special interest groups, and with the exception of the show that we had with Dr. John Rogers, where lobbyists can serve a very useful purpose. But people tend to think that special interest groups and lobbyists are just bad seeds. Bad. But what you're saying is that, that in some ways they play a very important, if not sometimes wholesome and necessary role. Absolutely. If you, human nature, we're all selfish. We're all greedy. There are just different degrees of it. And there's some of us that hold back and don't want personal gratification. And there's others that, that push it to the limit. But there's no doubt in my mind that, that these special interest groups, be they on the left or right or libertarian as we are, serve a, a very vital interest in society. Um, an NGO, a non-governmental organization, what is that if it's not a special interest group? What is the, the Humane Society? It's a special interest group that are concerned about about By the animals. medical association. Yeah, absolutely. And now how you temper that, and that's the mm. advantage of a society being educated. And that's where, unfortunately, here in Bahamian society, we've dropped the ball and, and the government is failing our people. Rick Lowe is our guest. He is vice president of the Nassau Institute here in Nassau, Bahamas. I'm Armstrong Williams. We're live to tape at the British Colonial Hilton in Nassau, where we're taping our fall shows. And we'll be back with much more. Don't go away. Physicians Capital Group offers premium revenue services nationwide. All the benefits of business outsourcing with control of in-house billing. They have a 90% client retention rate to date and have increased the bottom line for every established physician client. With a blended mix of cutting-edge technology, certified and motivated employees, and unique financing options, they can pay a physician today with the procedure they perform today. Visit PhysiciansCapitalGroup.com or call 713-554-5315.